What's good, everyone? Welcome to the Outside the Box podcast. My name is Nick Engvall. This episode is an amazing conversation. It's something that I'm really passionate about. Uh, It's something that I think everyone can take something away from. If you're new to the podcast, this is a a podcast about sneakers, but it's about the things that surround sneakers. It's about the, the conversations that need to be had in the world of footwear, in the industry of footwear, the design aspect, the creator aspect, just all of the surrounding things that kind of go along with the sneaker world. And on this episode, I talked to Jeremy Green. He's the founder of Calling All Creators, a name you might have heard of. They did some work with Adidas a few years back, and they kind of had a little bit of a of a shining moment, I would say. You know, just aligned perfectly with what Adidas was doing with the Brooklyn Creator Farm and kind of just that shift in mentality for a big corporate, you know, giant, so to speak, uh, going towards a more nimble and creative uh you know, approach, at least that's the intention. So, uh, that's a, let's just get right into the conversation. I hope you enjoy this one. I really did. And if you enjoy the conversation, definitely leave me a review on the Apple podcast app. Uh, you know, hit me up on Twitter, outside pods, Instagram, outside pods, really trying to kind of feel out what else I can provide as far as content and and entertainment value and, and maybe just things that make you also think outside the box. What's good, everyone? Welcome back to the Outside the Box podcast. My name is Nick Ingvall. Today, I've been looking forward to this conversation for a couple of weeks, and I've got Jeremy Green, founder of Calling All Creators, to talk some design stuff and really some some truly outside the box thinking when it comes to what what we think of as footwear design. So, welcome to the show, Jeremy. How you doing, man? Not too bad, man. Welcome, welcome, uh, peaceful world. Uh, happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, glad to have you, man. Um, You know, I I think like our last conversation was definitely in my head much longer than we were on the phone. And it it really got me thinking about the way that this whole, the whole design world of footwear and and beyond, right? And I I think I might have mentioned like this is close to me because my brother just finished industrial design, Mm -hmm. um, you know, went through art and got his master or bachelor of arts and then decided to go back and get his design degree. And you know, just thinking about his, him finishing that amongst COVID and the challenges of like even networking as a new graduate, right, Mm -hmm. is, is, you know, so different than what traditionally happens, which I think is, you know, I don't want to like get too, too deep into that yet, but kind of flawed anyway, right? Like, which I think you have some great (laughs) ideas to where we could take this. But um, I guess before we get into that, what, what kind of got you into sneakers originally? Um, great question. Um, I mean, I guess more on the professional side, um, you know, it's, it's within the last, uh, let's say about five or six years, but you know, more on the personal side, something that, you know, is culture, something that we grew up in, you know, played basketball literally all my life. Um, but you know, more back to the, the professional side, um, started calling our creators back in 2016. Um, and that was sort of my, professional introduction to the footwear industry. But, you know, as I mentioned, being into it from a culture standpoint, from a personal standpoint, um, both the aesthetic, the design, the culture has always been something that that's been like what I wanted to do professionally. Just, you know, unfortunately being black, the industry being what it is, um, I didn't really realize that there was more opportunities beyond just a footwear designer up until, you know, really about the last few years or so. Um, you know, they kind of keep those things from you in traditional education, um, you know, lanes or avenues being like universities and things like this, where it's industrial design, it's graphic design, it's, uh, marketing maybe, but even that's broad and you don't necessarily know that you can have like a full rewarding career in sports and in footwear. So, um, yeah, like it's, it's been, you know, a long time coming, but more professionally the, the last few years or so. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that, man. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a little over 40 now. I've been working in the sneaker world for almost 15 years in some full-time aspect, right? Mm-hmm. And I still think that my parents don't really know why I have all these sneakers or why, what I do. You know, like they see me doing content and they see some stuff and occasionally I'll share an event that I was a part of that helped put together or maybe share a shoe that I got to work on the marketing side for, Mm -hmm. but it's, Mm -hmm. it's one of those things. I think, you know, as I mentioned to you in a previous conversation, I really want to use this to kind of 
like showcase some of those things and and really focus my energy on the content that I create on like just opening those those doors for people right like i I think yeah. there's there's so much more right like we we I mean, I, I'm, you know, I can relate in that, like, there's the three or four things that you think you've heard of coming out of school or or just in general, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, wait, Nike has, you know, 50, 100,000 employees, you know, like, there's, there's tons of people <laughs> that aren't doing any of those things. So um, it's, it's, it's good to, it's good to hear that, because I, I think like, it, it kind of, you know, reinforces my belief of like, really needing to do these episodes of the podcast and have these conversations and kind of, you know, shed some light onto things that are out there that I just think that, I don't know, sometimes it feels intentional and sometimes it doesn't, but I don't want to get into conspiracy theories right. too deeply, but <laughs> I think it, it's it also, really is like, yeah. I, say, I think it's also the fact that the industry itself has evolved, right? Like it's, yeah. you know, back in, you know, let's say 94, you know, I would say it would probably be when I was old enough to really like appreciate and like recognize like sneakers. I mean, at the time I was what, six. Um, and I can't remember when exactly, but it was around that time when I got like my first pair of Jordan sixes and like, I just loved the design of it. Like I didn't really know yeah. or understand like who Michael Jordan was at the time. Like I knew basketball, but like names and like figures, I guess, um, weren't like really a thing. But like when you just consider that and like just the early stages of the Jordan brand and how that evolved and like, being able to see it and live it real time. Um, you obviously see the front facing, you know, the influencer, the creator, the athlete, or whoever this person is, um, but you very rarely see the back end of that. And that's, you know, really the mission of Calling All Creators is really sort of expose and, and um, you know, just make that, that, that part of the business more transparent that, hey, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes than you may think. And, and you know, as I said, I believe that the industry has evolved and like, a lot more of those opportunities have, have sprung up and it's just been the case of you know just just you, you you know what you know or if you know you know kind of like energy or like you know if you've been in those spaces if you're from portland if you're in the sports world if you're in um, industrial design like you knew of those things and then now you know really as of recently like the last couple decades are people starting to like figure out like hey i can go to school for this to be a footwear designer and work for this brand or, or be apparel or materials or, or, or some sort of textile and that be your specialty and your job and your function, but you're still doing, you know, work and projects on, that you want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, so calling all creators, you mm -hmm. said started in 2016. What, you know, I, I guess walk me through how that all happened and, and how, you know, where you went from there to get us up to date in the last five years of doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, the, the moment that, that I started calling our creators was one of those late night, early morning, like creator moments um, that I feel like a lot of people can relate to that 3 a.m. Just like spark of inspiration. Um, but looking back at it, I, I do feel that a lot of a lot of moments and like, you know, just experience led up to that that particular moment. So at the time, I mean, this is 2016. Um, I was actually working for Tesla at the time. Um, so. Just to back up even further, I originally um, went to school for architecture. Um, that shifted to sustainability was my actual degree, but I focused on civil engineering or urban dynamics and business. So I um, worked for Tesla immediately out of college. Um, that was a super rewarding opportunity. Just learned really how to build and like scale a business because I didn't work for the automotive side. I actually worked um, for the renewable energy side. So um, nice. just working on really building, testing, validating, scaling um, new services, new products. And it started with just renewable energy, selling solar panels, and then um, what it is today, which is Tesla Energy with like branded products that like Tesla is known to have. Um, but really was building that infrastructure. And while I love the company and the work and like the opportunity, and, and I mean, certainly like the pay and the equity um, at that time, I was like, well, two things, one, um, for anyone that understands like renewable energies and sustainability and all that, and, and <clears throat> specifically power, understands that it's one of the last few industries that companies can still have a monopoly on. So in that, it made it made my dog my job like very 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 difficult. Um, so in that, like just the industry in, in and of itself, like just needed more time to develop. Um, but also the second part of that was I just wanted to be in sneakers. So. 
started calling all creators randomly and instantly. And I, I mean, literally like the next morning, like I woke up to a DM from Mark Dolce and he's like, who is this? Who's running this account? Um, so by extension of that was introduced to him. Um, he thought it was someone internal. So it was a bit shocking for him to see that someone was like, you know, building energy outside of the brand. Um, Cause at the time it was just their um, recruiting initiative. Um, was calling all creators. Um, at the time, Mark had just joined. They were still building out like, really the idea of what the Brooklyn Farm was. Um, they had the space, but they were really building out like what the brand of it was. So, um, you know, by extension of that, we sort of been or, or became the the mood board, but also like the digital social media arm of the Brooklyn Farm and just advanced concepts. So, um, super rewarding. Uh, I think that's a unique unique experience. Like that, that's not something that happens every day for sure. Um, to be like instantly connected to like one of your childhood heroes of like, you know, in the footwear like design realm. So that was cool. But um, like I said, it, it was a long time coming, just building up to like, you know, footwear and specifically design and like that arm of the business is where I want to be. Like that was the moment in which for me, it, it was validated because someone like a Mark Dolce like instantly recognized it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's such an awesome thing. I, I, I am a, I'm a huge believer in synchronicity and yeah. that, you know, there's no such thing as a coincidence. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, that's just such a beautiful thing to hear, literally just putting your thoughts out there, right? Like, and somebody recognizing it, you know, if you're not familiar with Mark Dolce, he's, he's a former Nike designer that designed countless things that you already know. Yeah. But then uh, moved to Adidas to start the Brooklyn Creator Farm, which is kind of the the hub of ideas for Adidas at this point, I think. But um, I think the other thing that's really awesome about this, you know, as as you were talking about working with Tesla, and one of the things that I really hope to to you know kind of continue to push out through the podcast and and my content is the conversation around sustainability, right? Like sustainability. Mm -hmm you know, it's a, it's a buzzword. And on, on the last, on the last episode of this podcast, I talked to um, Liz Beecroft, who is a social worker, but her, her, you know, her goals are to, you know, get people to talk about mental health and, and change that narrative to be thinking of mental fitness, right? The same way we work mm -hmm. out our bodies, we need to work out our minds. And I think that that's something that, you know, there's something there that's got to be shifted in the sustainability, you know, conversation because 100%. I, yeah, I, th I think I might've told you this in, in our last conversation, but I'm going to reiterate it. I remember when I first started writing about sneakers, you know, 13, 14 years ago, whatever. Um, one of the first shoes that Nike, that I, I got a press release from Nike from was a all black Air Max 90 that was quote, mm -hmm. a vegan friendly shoe. Right. And I just looked at the shoe and thought like, well, this is just an all plastic shoe. Like it doesn't use any animal byproducts, but it's all man-made, not to pick on the materials, but garbage, right? It's like, yeah. you know, like how do we change that, right? Because just because you can say something is vegan or sustainable in some way doesn't mean that it actually is, right? Like just because you right. use a piece of sustainable material as a part of a bigger thing doesn't mean that, you know, shoe could be recycled down and, and brought back to life in another form and again, right? Like, exactly. especially considering like some of the stuff like glues and that, but how, how do you kind of see that whole conversation around sustainability, you know, maybe as it is and, and where we could go with it that might help kind of, you know, cause it sounds like it's awesome to hear, like you basically, I, I was so, you know, kind of floored by this when we talked, but like you almost mm -hmm. combine your two passions, right? It's like sustainability yeah. on one side, footwear on the other and it's just inspiring to see people doing this so like i'm juiced to just talk to you about it and like <laughs> learn from you about it but like also hopefully get other people excited about like look we all have these things so let's 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 hear about what you think about how we could change the sustainability conversation yeah yeah um i mean you know not to be like meta and like you know we, we've talked about like divinity and just you know the universe and timing but i feel like and that was even me prefacing, like, you know, building up to the moment that was calling all creators is I feel like the moments now um, when it comes to sustainability and the unfortunate side is, you know, the experience that you shared. And, and I know in our last discussion, we kind of joked that like I, I liken that to 
soy, right? When it as it relates to food, and because there's always this this strong parallel of sustainability in our food systems, um, that while soy is very very cheap to produce. You know, you can manufacture benefits, health benefits for the human body. It, it it's plastic, like it, it's fake. It doesn't do wonders for you know the the, the cycle that is uh, biology. Um, and yes, it's the easiest way to produce the most amount of product. You know, as it relates to the food system. So I liken that or parallel that to you know the all black Air Maxes, which is like okay, cool. You just replace the material, same shoe, and you created a narrative around it. Um, but while that's been the case, I've operated in, although my degree is sustainability, I graduated from the School of Sustainability. I kind of hate the word sustainability uh, because it's been co-opted by a lot of corporations of, you know, this narrative of like, all right, we're green, right? And this is our sustainability initiative. And while that's great, it it's literally one one quarter of the pie, I would say. Um, and I, I've replaced that internally and, and just with my own, um, you know, lingo with closed loop, which is actually producing something with the intent of a piece of it, if not all of it, you know, which being the goal, being returned back into that process. Um, so I'm happy that a lot of brands are starting to pick up on what that means. I mean, you see brands like On who have, you know, their, their actual uh, shoe that you don't own. Um, yeah. You know, obviously Tom's is one of the originators of, of that idea of, uh, you know, the sustainability aspect as it relates to like, you know, just global initiatives. But even that was more gimmicky. Like, yes, you're producing shoes and you're giving shoes to those that need them. But like what happens to your shoes on both levels, right? Because there's places yep. that have massive landfill or uh, um, um, landfills. I'm saying um, there's places that have massive landfills, and there's those that don't understand what they are yet. But if you give them all the materials, eventually they're going to have that. So you're not even actually solving the problem. You're just saying, "Hey, we're giving shoes to people," which again, it's a great initiative, but like you said, a band aid. So I'm happy that it's coming to that. I think there's just there's so many solutions that that haven't even been like scratched yet. Um, that we're literally still nicking the surface. And, you know, because the brands like On are doing great things, All Birds are doing great things, but um, they're doing their quarter or their piece, right? Like All Birds, they have their, um, they create their own index where this shoe has, you know, 9.2 kilograms of um, uh, uh, greenhouse emissions. So great, that's a great index to show what the actual impact is, but that just takes it a step further from that Nike Air Max, which is, hey, we replaced the materials on this, but this is the actual impact. So it's reducing the impact, right? Yeah. But like, how do we actually get that shoe to be continuously solving a problem? That one shoe, not just, you know, one brand, one anything, that one shoe, how does that actually get back to the brand? So those are challenges that I'm excited to tackle because as you mentioned, like they are my passions, um, you know, footwear being sort of the muse, but sustainability really being the passion in like wanting to just provide long-term solutions to a lot of these problems and, uh, and a lot of these uh, industries that that I just enjoy like on a personal level. So um, I'm excited for all the change, but it's it's still, still so very early like in this process of like sustainability as it relates to footwear, of course, but you know, greater industries as well. Yeah, definitely. So that that actually makes me think of, a, I, you know, it's probably been a couple of years or or more maybe now that Adidas came out and said, we're going to have, you know, no virgin plastics in mm -hmm. anything that our company does. Right. Um, how like, is that, I, I know that like, it's tough to say whether that's effective or not, because, mm -hmm. you know, people that understand all of these things we're talking about realize that like, look, it's, it's, it's good. It's a step in the right direction, but, yeah. It's a step when you've got to run a marathon, right? And right, right. So, do you think things like that could be beneficial if other companies applied, or if they, you know, using your your concept of like closed loop, is mm -hmm. there a way that a company could do that, like across the board, with closed loop materials as opposed to, you know, just the the you know recyclable or non virgin materials? 
Is that a, a feasible thing? And like, you know, maybe could you talk about what you see as like the challenges of like the product side and, and then maybe even thinking of like the, you know, the, the industry side, right? The like yeah. the buildings and the materials within. Yeah. So I think, I mean, my, my personal opinion is it's, it's a two part problem. So the first part is there's the big brands, right? And they're, they're so massive that it's just it's it's going to be decades and, and probably centuries before they really start moving. I don't say centuries, but probably, you know, a century before they really start moving the needle on a global scale. Like they, these companies are that large. So while I do applaud the, you know, like a, a, an Adidas Parley initiative or a, an Adidas Carbon initiative or you know, a, a Nike move to zero initiative, all those are great individually. The problem exists, and, and this is where Colin All Creators wants to step in, is um, to me, it's, it's, it's two issues that need to be tackled, is there's the closed loop, and then there's the open source. Um, the problem, and as it relates specifically to these large entities, is they silo their innovation within their organization, and then, I mean, outside of the the organization like you can forget it especially when it comes to like a nike or something like it's just no one can touch it right so carbon is a, a perfect example um and adidas was was quick on that and, and it was you know really behind their, their open source methodology to actually partner with a lot of these you know material manufacturers and process manufacturers um, they found carbon. They weren't actually ever producing shoes. They were just making other 3D or 4D printed, um, you know, products. It just so happened that it works with this particular material for, you know, midsole. But, and I get it, you know, Adidas wants to be exclusive. They want to have that, that, that product. They want to have that brand, all of that. But being able to open that up, even if it's not for the big players, right? If you involve the little players, you say, hey, I know we talk about like outdoor and like, you know, keen, right? You're small yeah. enough to where you're not going to challenge Adidas as a brand. Or if you do, it's going to be decades. Why don't we open up some of our innovation or products or materials to you? See what you do with it. That is one of those sort of like off-brand collaborations that you see now where it doesn't make sense. But when you see it, it's like, oh, yeah, perfect, right? Keen is now using carbon 4D printed midsoles to evolve their product line. But that just shifts the industry, but unfortunately like, we don't see that. So um, as I mentioned, like the first problem is just the big organizations, like they're, they're too big and too slow, just to put it plainly, um, that you know they can create initiatives, but it's one team on materials or one team on a product direction or one team in you know, basketball category or running category. So it's very siloed. And, you know, as I mentioned, that doesn't get usually get to spread amongst the organization. And then, you know, when you include the external, then like you can just forget it. Like, you know, very, very few brands are going to open up that. So I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, in the case of like on and that service, that it doesn't have exclusive IP tied directly to it, because I think that as a service, as a business model, really should be what almost every new footwear brand should adopt. You know what I mean? Like that should just be embedded in your ethos. Like, hey, you never owned this shoe. Yeah. Right? Or, you know, if, if that's really your lane, if you want to be in sustainability or closed loop, like that's just a new business model that you're just always adopting. Almost like Tom's did, you know, back when they started. Like they they opened the floodgates of like, hey, you don't have to take all the profit, right? You can give a little bit of profit to this four good thing. And this became... I mean, I would argue even the birth of like what we see of certified B corporations now, like they just ingrained yep. it in their culture, their ethos that it just became normalcy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so I'm gonna kind of go back to that that idea of like, you know, this kind of siloed way of thinking, and mm -hmm. just kind of give to you what I see it as from someone who's not really behind the curtain, I guess. Um, and see if that's where, if, if I'm right on the way I assume this house, how this stuff works. But it seems like, you know, obviously with, with uh, you know, brands will have a bunch of different categories, whether that's running or basketball or whatever, but all these people work individually. So not only are they siloed within the company, but 
they also tend to silo themselves in ter in terms of like technology, right? Or material mm -hmm. use because they don't go outside of the company. But if they do, they tend to go towards like, you know, I think of like Boost and like, you know, uh, I think it's BASF or somebody that was creating that, right? Where it's like, mm -hmm. you know, that is like, oh, we've already had this partner. So they just go back to that partner and are like, hey, can, can we work on a new cushioning system? Yeah. But also like on... on on the, or I guess thinking in that way, it also forces the rest of the industry to kind of follow suit, right? Because they're, they have to be competitive in the price point, at least in some regards, but then they also are constantly using almost the same players to provide that type of stuff, right? I think, you know, I'm, and I'm, I can't remember precisely, but I think like, you know, Puma's cushioning is the same as Adidas Boost, you know, roughly mm -hmm. same company. And then even Joyride with Nike and and Puma's cell fuel fuel cell whatever that newer one, the the beaded yeah, yeah. version is right. So they they're basically buying this you know technology cushioning whatever you want to call it and being able to label it, label it as their own rather than kind of finding the people that are actually pushing not to not to discredit the people at those companies that are creating those technologies because those yeah. are phenomenal. But like how can we kind of change that? Um, so. I guess like, you know, how, how do you, how do you see like opportunities to, you know, I think you used it on the last time, last uh, conversation we had, but like democratizing those types of, th that type of change that's needed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, great question. Um, so my thing is, well, it's the reason why calling all creators exists, right? To, to democratize um, the industry. And, and, you know, and I've shared this with you and I, and I share it with really anyone that I talk to like in my personal life, but like, it's bigger than sneakers, right? Like there's sneakers is the muse. And I think that's something that I will say is popular now, but it, it's something that any and everyone can relate to like man, woman, child, um, you know, it, it's just a, a global thing. Um, the idea though is, it's, it's similar to politics in that democratizing, you know, the industry and, and specifically um, the design and marketing realms of it is you, you solve a couple of problems, um, mainly in authenticity and transparency, but also you're, you're even in the playing field. And that's not to discredit anyone that is, you know, a seasoned, tenured, you know, 20, 30, 40 year industrial designer. Um, the skill set is the skill set. The experience is, is a different thing. And obviously, like, you know, your skill sets will develop with your experience. But there are great ideas today um, that, that are, you know, trapped within minds that don't necessarily have the skill set or don't necessarily have the experience doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have good ideas, right? I mean, you think about, I mean, even someone like a Stacey Abrams, right? And, and you draw like that parallel of this was, was, this is a woman that politicians didn't really take seriously, didn't really consider as a threat, right? Didn't really consider a, a true politician in that sense. Changed the game, literally changed the whole fucking game. Um, and that is my hope for a lot of the independent footwear designers is while they don't have, you know, the, the, the mirrored skill set or the mirrored experiences of, you know, these design executives at these big brands, they still have great ideas and they should be given a platform to share those ideas. So my, my hope for the future is, and this is again beyond just footwear, is that external people meaning people that don't necessarily work for brands or that choose to work independently and you know, more freelance basis can actually own a bit of their ip as it relates to these products that they're partnering with so you know you, you see it in, in glimpses but let's say you know just on the topic that we're talking about a material right independent designer as their thesis is working on this new material exploration they now own that IP and then they can turn around and sell that to Nike, to Adidas, to Puma, and you know, really sort of own what that is versus the opposite of they're trying to prove the material so that one of those brands can actually hire them. So I think that's a part of the education that, you know, and again the parallel with the politics is 
there was the people that were just saying, go out and vote, right? Just go out and vote. And they're telling you what to vote or who to vote for and why. Um, and they're sort of imposing that, that idea, which is the education system. And then you have someone like a Stacey Abrams that is really beyond like a great admission. It's not just, oh, we're trying to win, you know, the battle. We're trying to win the war here. So like do this and then do this. Like there's an actual strategy behind it. So that is the the pulse and the understanding and, and the, the, the cultural nuance that a lot of these independent creators have that sometimes the design execs don't. And not to say that they, they don't have the experience or the skill set or any of that, they're just too far removed from you know, the ground, if you will, um, that they need those perspectives and that doesn't really come from a spreadsheet. Like it comes from that individual actually contributing to the brand, to the product, to the story, to the narrative, to whatever that thing is. Um, but that that's really what democratizing is to me is giving those people uh, first of all a platform which is what calling all creators can do but then more so an opportunity um which is what you know that the, the greater network that calling all creators has afforded and being directly tied to a global pool of aficionados on footwear to literally design executives or i would say design legends like as it relates to footwear. we haven't got tinker yet but you know <laughs> i know he's not not officially on ig but you know, we, we want to move to like having that caliber of, of designers, but I mean, there's 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 a healthy amount in there, but it's just it's just throwing them all in that 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 gumbo, if you will, and saying, hey, yeah, everyone has a, a contributing factor to this, you know, this pot. Yeah, it, it makes me think too, like kind of going back to the idea of of the silos, right? Like the mm-hmm. other challenge with, you know, potentially like someone that that steps into you know, let's just use Nike as an example, because you brought up Tinker, right? Like Tinker's mm-hmm. incredibly successful. Yeah. Um, but I also would argue that he's kind of a crutch for some of the marketing people at Nike, right? Like he's the default, you know, there's always a Tinker story that will, you know, sell out a shoe, right? And yeah. and I'm one of those people that loves those stories. So like, I'm not, I'm not picking That's on really anybody, right? Like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, specifically like the, you know, seeing the sketch version of the Jordan threes, like that was like a wow factor for me that I thought, damn, I didn't think this day would come, but I love these, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. But I also think that, you know, the industry kind of has a lot of these crutches. Uh, I'll just call them crutches. But like, I I think too, like on the marketing side, it's easy for me to, to kind of, you know, see them because that's usually where I'm at some form Mm -hmm. of that. Um, You know, we, we kind of look at like, you know, like, we just talked about this on the sneaker history podcast a a few weeks back, but like signature basketball shoes, right? Like the idea of a signature basketball shoe is that, you know, it's only really going to sell if that player is in LA or New York, maybe Mm -hmm. Houston, Miami, but like basically New York and LA. And like, it's so funny to me because we've proven that theory is wrong 30 years ago, right? Like Penny sold (laughs) shoes out of Orlando for like, I would say the way like, it started was completely opposite of that. It was just like, hey, right. we're going to give you a shoe. And it was more experiential or experimental. Just like, yeah, fuck it. We'll try it. Like, give them a shoe. It, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yep. Yeah. And I, and I think we can, you know, I think like this is a, a much bigger part of the shift that we need to see. Right. And I, I'm, as I said before, we started recording. I'm mm-hmm. optimistic from where we go from all of this political stuff the covid yeah. stuff all of that but like we like i know that like i've spent 90 percent of my time in the house for the last year and i just want to walk around the neighborhood hugging people right like i just want to like <laughs> like i want to go to the local you know taco spot and like like appreciate those people so much more right and i hope that that translates to a, a much bigger group of people than myself but yeah. like also like, you know, in, in industry, right? Like I think we're at this point where we've we've kind of we've pushed everything to those like status quo level of like how do we actually make this successful, mm-hmm. especially in footwear. And like, you know, I I, I actually was talking about it um on an, on another podcast, but um the idea of like, you know, um the more than a game LeBron seven, right? Yeah. A shoe is the same shoe, but it's it's labeled for different cities around the globe to kind of be this marketing thing for, you know, 
the film and all the things that went with that, you know, um, time frame, right? But mm-hmm. to me, I look at that and think, wow, like somebody that probably at that point had never really had, unless they were a crazy basketball fan, had no reason to like go buy a LeBron shoe in France, now lives, you know, an hour or two outside of Paris and is like, I got to get this LeBron shoe because it's Paris and I love going to Paris because it's only a couple hours away from me. And like, I hop on the train to do that. And now it's like, they have a shoe that really is not like a Paris specific shoe, right? It's just a LeBron with a little Paris label on the heel. But like the story brings people in from such smaller communities because you get around, you get out of those major hubs, right? And I know Paris is a major hub and you could, you know, argue that, but like, it's just interesting because I think we're all craving craving a much more local experience, right? And a much more personal experience, right? Both in like the physical sense, but also like the conversations that we're having, you know, I, I think that all of this kind of can, it's, we're in a beautiful place for it as, as bad as it has been, you know, we're all looking at things a little bit differently. And I think too, like, you know, if there's anything that has come from the last couple of years of the chaos, there's like that baby step of, of brands committing to do better. Right. Right. Just generally speaking. And I think that's one thing that I, I assume probably is the case. But, you know, if you choose to become a designer and work under someone like Tinker at Nike, you know, boom, you have like unlimited, you know, not unlimited, but unlimited resources compared to being a freelance designer fresh out of school or or trying to, you know, get your way into one of these big companies. And I, I'm assuming that that's probably a huge, you know, uh, opportunity for people to like literally get outside of that status quo and outside the box, so to speak within the companies, but then you, <clears throat> you're already in this silo. So you probably can't go too far. Right. Unless you're, I assume doing it after hours and stuff like that. I don't know. That's, that's kind yeah, of my assumption. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I think you're right in the sense that like, you know, th- there's still a form of a silo for sure. Like whether you're internal or external, um, you know, obviously internal has uh, a much larger advantage um, as far as like the, the resources available to them. But like, I think in addition to the gig economy and like just the, the emergence of that and, and, and more so, you know, the creator economy that, that's sort of emerging on, on social media, and like, uh, you know, TikTok, Instagram, they're, you know, as bad as COVID was, like it leveled the playing field for everyone, right? It was everyone can create, right? I mean, depending on what you do, um, but everyone can create. Like, I mean, just think about the amount of podcasts that launched in 2020, like, and I would even say the second half of 2020, um, you know, because so many people were like, all right, like this is COVID's here to stay, right? I'm stuck in the house. I still want to have these conversations. I still want to connect with people. I still want to have community and, and foster that I could, you know, and, and at the time, I think even Clubhouse was still beta, um, you know, if you think about like August, September at that time. Um, but, you know, just Instagram lives and, you know, just these these ways of communicating on a digital scale became the norm. I mean, Zoom, it's just tenfold, yeah. like their, their stock, you know what I mean? Um, but like things like that help level the playing field for everyone. Um, but we're still, you know, we talked about this before the recording, we're still in that sort of planning phase of, you know, as it relates to brands and what they're doing for the culture and and for society and for communities, underserved communities specifically. Um, You know, we, we, we just haven't seen those conversations. And even with all the statements like last June, you know, we're all great. Yep. everyone in the community is still like okay cool like where did all that money go what's it being used for how is it being you like they have questions right and like that level of accountability is what excites me the most is you know whether it's in footwear whether it's in the government whether it's in whatever american corporation or industry that level of accountability is is it's scaling you know what I mean? And, and people, like the, you know, democracy, if you will, they're, they're, are saying, hey, if I'm going to support my, you know, this brand with my money or vote, 
what are you doing for me? And it actually starts to become this, this reciprocal relationship rather than purely transactional where, I mean, obviously there's still going to be people that just buy sneakers to buy sneakers, but like, because there's, there's no one that, that beats Nike. Right. But like, if there's now a bunch of different smaller players that are giving you similar product, um, sometimes better in some cases, but they fully stand behind what you stand behind. Like, you know, which side are you going with? You know what I mean? And then, like I said, it's hard to compete with a Nike on that scale brand wise. But like, if I find, you know, a, a LeBron, right. Or I find a company that makes a LeBron, but outside of the Nike brand, they make the exact same shoe performance wise, but that same shoe is part of a closed loop system or part of a, a greater system. Yeah. I'm going with option B. You know what I mean? I think that's just where the democracy side comes into that. There's just so many options now that the, the playing fields are level, but also it's a threat for big brands. Like they have to be for, you know, the causes or for the underserved communities or for, you know, insert thing here. Otherwise they know, you know, the risk that, that comes with that. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I it, there's two things that I kind of want to go back on in that. Mm. So one is like for the first time in probably since I was a teenager or something and just found it at a Goodwill, like I bought Columbia Sportswear, right? Because mm -hmm. it was like, oh, this guy's speaking up for, you know, all the injustices that are happening and is representative of the way I feel about something. You know, it's it's like things like that really like I'm I'm very drawn to that as like like stand for something, right? Like yeah. it's it's something that I think I totally understand the business challenges of that on all aspects, right? There are mm -hmm. always people that you're gonna upset, you're gonna make or lose money. You can argue that left or right, either way, what, however you want to go. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like I'd rather have something somebody that believes for something in a respectable way than right. you know the kind of the kind of chaos approach to it that I I would say, you know, like Kevin Plank from Under Armour is is very much that right. Like he dances around a lot mm -hmm. of the stuff. He's spoken up about certain things, but then of course he's obviously you know putting money in different areas. And not to pick on you know him or that brand or anything, but like there's tons of people that do this, right? It's part right. of the game that a lot of business leaders play in the in the U.S. And I think it just needs to be eliminated altogether and like get rid of all that crap. But yeah. Um, one of the things that, that I was thinking of as you were talking about how we kind of normalize Zoom calls and podcasts, you know, like I I hadn't done, um, I've been doing, well, this podcast started about five years ago and then, you know, took a couple of different breaks. And then I'd been doing the Sneaker History podcast a couple times a week, which is more of a, you know, it's more like if we were just like, you know, grabbing food, you which know, you every week talking about them. sneakers, right? The very community sp talk. And I think that, that is more of a, it's a, it's just a different lane. And, and I like both of those worlds. So like, I'm trying mm -hmm. to keep my, keep my, you know, finger on the pulse of, of how things go in those conversations from the sneaker kind of community and like the people. But then this one is like, how do I talk about those more important things, which is why I ended up bringing it back. But one of the things that I didn't do prior was the video side. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've always wanted to, but I was always, particular about like doing it. We did it, you know, a few years back, but it was like such a tedious thing for me to take on by myself and, you know, using different platforms. I've tried a few and it was like, okay, it's time to do it. Let's just go for it. Mm -hmm. But I will say that I think one of the things that normalized Zoom or any of this like kind of conversation outside of the work element, right? Like I think if you've worked in any corporation, you've had some version of a Zoom call, even in the office, right? Yeah. But the verses, right? Versus battles, yeah. like was like the first time it was like, wait, it's okay to do this remotely and record it on Instagram Live or mm -hmm. wherever you watch it now. Like that was such a stamp of approval for us all to, like, not only stamp of approval, but it was stamp of approval for us all to be like, okay, this is this is like really a thing that we're gonna do because we got to mm -hmm. get through this. Yeah. But it was also like this beautiful way of like, look. This brings all of us together in a way that, like, I can't even remember the last time, you know, I can't, like, I can't remember the last time hip hop did that for an event. You know, there's certain mm -hmm. events that come through, right? Like, 
you know, uh, the, the big show in New York that happens like occasionally like K day out in LA, will do like a, a really like big show and you bring a lot of the West coast artists together mm-hmm. and like people would be buzzing about it on Twitter and on social a little bit, but like versus was like, look, like we all got something to do on Saturday, you know, yeah. like that was the first time of the pandemic that was like, wow. So thinking of that, I'm, I'm going to throw the question to you. Like mm-hmm. what could a brand do? What could, you know, a Nike or Adidas do as a statement like that to kind of be like, Hey, this is something that we got to do. That's going to change the industry. Right. Because versus changed the whole thing to me. Yeah. I mean, I mean, without sharing too much, like that's that's what Calling All Creators 2021 and, and beyond will look like is is really sort of engineering those moments, right? Of and you know, I, I love the the parallel of, of verses and, and and really just what that meant for, I mean, culture, not even just like hip hop, but just like people, right? In that moment of like that was a cultural moment, and like you said, it was it was the digital club. It's like cool. Like we can't go anywhere, so bet. Like I'm about to see, you know, Patty versus, um, <laughs> you know, like on Saturday. So like, that's really our goal is to sort of engineer those moments. Um, one of the biggest challenges in, in what we do is gaining the internal support of the design team. You know, when it comes to well, big brands. I mean, smaller brands are a bit more more open to those things. Um, but what I do feel and, and believe is that COVID showed even the best brands that their digital strategy was not that great, right? I mean, even when you think about Nike and, and even when you think about their best product, which is sneakers, and while they, you know, they, they didn't really skip a beat as far as like dropping things, they really, really beefed up their content side of things because it's like, hey, people can't go anywhere. They can't go to the shop and, and see the little plexiglass display case with the shoe, right? So we need to be that same thing on a digital scale. And, you know, they, they built more of an experience or an engagement around it. So you see things with like LeBron right now, with like voting and being able to actually have a voice and have a say and, and have engagement around product. Um, and, you know, obviously for Nikes, and it's just keeping you in the app. Like the more you're in the app, the more you click around, the more you see the shoe you want to buy on discount or one that you've been having your eye on for a while. And, and, you know, that's really their goal is just play the game, right? Literally play the game. Um, so in all of that, and, and, you know, not to just even just pick on them, just brands have figured out that their digital strategy is not what they thought it was. Um, and, We've seen the, the the relaunch of even Adidas Confirm and them trying to mirror what, you know, sneakers is or really what sneakers was. <laughs> um, but it's it's comforting, like being in the seat of, you know, having calling operators and then operating it that they're starting to catch on that, hey, you have a community that we want to talk to, right? And it's, it's not just the hype beast, the high snob, the complex community, which is all great. Like those are the greater fashion, the greater footwear, the greater you know, culture. Um, but those I liken to a CNN, uh, a Fox, a CBS, like the big media channels that sort of control the narratives and manipulate it in some cases. Um, whereas calling all creators is, you know, that that small little arm of you know, the Wall Street Journal or that small little arm of, you know, Refinery29 or something. They're more like a vice where it's like, hey, you know, we're, we're holding those narratives, right? The, the ones that, that we really want to, like, cling on to, but we're also creating our own. And it's a counterculture, if you will. So um, that's really what I'm most optimistic about. But, like, you know, with these brands, it's 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 a realization for them that they need to really beef up their digital strategy, they need to really examine uh, internally their teams and like, you know, on, on all scales, like, you know, who the, the individual individual players are, like, do they hold biases? Um, have they been in their seat long enough? And I, I've seen this in, in Note to be True with Nike, where they're just giving people flex assignments just to really like test them. Um, so those are the things that I'm most excited about, but, you know, when it's a big organization, again, they can only move at a certain pace. So um with that you know they they 
they need to have these moments where they're connecting with the culture on an authentic level. And it needs to be beyond a complex con or a, I guess a complex land now where they're figuring out these innovative ways to really connect with people. And in addition to, you know, the complex land and the highest divided in these places, those are the general public, in my opinion, now. Now it's like, you want to talk to that niche creator in Singapore that is doing their part on like Black Lives Matter, right? From their seat in, you know, Korea. And they're doing it through the lens of footwear and fashion. Like, how do you tap that person and activate both Singapore and then maybe some other remote community that connects with that product, let's say it's Memphis, right? And like that be your strategy of, all right, like let's figure out if we've got something there. Um, so yeah, that that's, you know, a bit long-winded in that sense, but like, you know, that's where... I mean, brands are starting to catch on, but um, we're going to see it a lot more on like a larger scale where it's less, you know, Virgil, Yoon, Daniel Arsham, Jun Takayashi, and then maybe that like a Liz B. Croft, you know, under that. Like yes. you're going to see a lot more of the Liz B. Crofts elevate to that level of a Virgil or a Jun. I mean, maybe not like in like notoriety and like, you know, following, but just in how the brands themselves start to, you know, even the products. Go, I think. Yeah. I mean, that, I'm excited for that. Cause I, I think it's, it's really interesting as you were saying that I was thinking about like, you know, being somebody that's, you know, up until the last couple of years done the trade show thing, mm -hmm. you know, repeatedly for a decade plus. And um, it's almost like we miss those, connections right like I, I don't we didn't have like a design element to you know like an agenda or a magic or something right there's like a sourcing yeah. and those kind of things for product but like we still connect with those people that are challenging the norms within that you know you know trade show bubble right and it's it's interesting because we've we've seen those kind of be eliminated or you know they've they've definitely fallen off in recent years Mm -hmm. And we've seen the big brands pull out completely, right? So you don't yeah. see Nike or Adidas or Reebok or, you know, it's like none of those major, major players even want to be a part of that because they, you know, whatever they can, they the, whatever they choose as yeah, I mean, they're gonna be say, not a part yeah, of that, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah exactly. Nike, it's like what, we're going to complex land for what? Like our shoes are going to sell regardless. <laughs> like, yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. So I want to ask like, you know, Obviously, like in the five years you've been doing calling all creators, you've probably had some speed bumps along the way. What's something that you, you know, you look back at now that was, you know, maybe a headache at the time, but you look back and think like, damn, this is a turning point or this is something I could take away. So next time I don't have to, you know, go down this path again. Yeah, um, that's a great question. <laughs> um, I mean... And this is me just being frank. We've had far more losses than we've had wins. And I think that's the case of any sort of startup or any like incubator or, you know, someone that's being more experimental in that sense. But that, that's really the goal, right? Is to test and iterate and, and just continue that process. So, um, I guess in, in that sense, hmm, I mean, my biggest regret, uh, without a doubt is project one. And not the actual project, but uh, the manner in which I went about it. So, you know, as I mentioned, like I, I'm not of like footwear background or, uh, you know, I used to work for Nike um, retail when I was working at Tesla as well. Um, so I only had, you know, a, a very, very narrow understanding of like the larger entity that, that are these big brands. Um, obviously started to learn more, like just working with Adidas, but even then, um, I would have approached Project One differently. And what I mean by that is, um, so let me back up and just explain what it is actually. So Project One was sort of our final case study and then pitched to uh, the Adidas uh, Advanced Concepts team. Um, so both Mark uh, Dolce and uh, those who don't know, Jose Cabaco, who's the um, VP of uh, Storytelling and like Marketing, like that's his, his avenue. Um, and then Dolce is just, you know, VP of like creative direction, um, but all under advanced concepts anyways. So put together, uh, I did put together a uh, global team of uh, 12 designers 
um, in under a brief of an epitime. Donovan Mitchell was just a, an endorsed athlete. He wasn't signature. There was no inklings of signature. Um, we just decided to go at it. You know, I, I didn't tell the Adidas brand, um, which is, that was probably the only mistake in not saying, hey, I want to take a stab at this because I feel like had I told them at the time when we accepted the project, it probably would have actually made it to market. Um, unfortunately, uh, I wanted to come to them with a finished product or at least a, a, a prototype. Um, so put that together, a few months passed, um, pitched it to them. Uh, they loved it, but during our development process, they also announced that uh, there was a, the, the Don the shoe one was coming. Um, no anything outside of that. I think it literally at that point, it was like a tweet. And it wasn't even like Don issue one. It was just like kind of like what they're doing with Trey Young right now. Just like, oh, mm. you know, he's getting a signature shoe and like you know, just kind of create the buzz there. Um, anyway, so pitched them. Unfortunately, it didn't fit into the product one runway, but uh, for a few reasons. One, just not understanding like what their um, design runway looked like for the next few years. So, you know, there was pieces of either existing or uh, yet to come uh, products that we were sort of referencing and, and that was sort of showing up. So, you know, just to avoid redundancy in that sense. So anyways, um, basically that was the regret. Like that was where I learned like, okay, like I can't, I can't try to tackle open source and still follow the same clutch to your chest, like IP, you know, ideal that, that the brands go with. Like it's, you know, yeah. it's not that I had, crazy trademarks or crazy ip or you know, any of that it was just it was design that we made and that um unfortunately aspects of it did actually land in the market without us but like that's also part of the risk that you take as a young designer or really just a di designer in general you have to put your work out there in order to to really validate it. And, and that's that was the tough lesson for me is that in order to validate it the people need to see it and in that case the people that were in charge of making the decision needed to see it so that it could have, you know, landed in, in the market. But uh, for us, while the relationship with Adidas ended at that time, for me, it was just an, a broadening of the world. Of, hey, we did this for the Adidas brand. We got the attention of like literally the highest level that you can get. We can do this for anyone. Um, so, you know, it, it sort of pivoted there. So, you know, while it was a loss and a lesson that that particular product didn't land in market, um, it's a great experience for the designers involved. Uh, great feedback from the, the Adidas team, um, and you know the the only miss that that I wanted um, was actually having uh, Donovan's feedback and, and having you know just more of an input um, from them and from the athletes. So that's really the only miss, um, which would have happened likely had I pitched it to Adidas earlier. So um, definitely a loss, but you know it's one of those things where it's like okay, you know take it on the chin, keep it moving, and. Um, you know, just continue to prove that that case study and that theory because it did just that for like for calling all creators as an entity. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and it's and it's one of those things where like this is like you know for the the younger audience that's listening, this is something that's repeated, right? Like mm -hmm. I as a you know kind of like a agency type that would go pitch people. Mm -hmm. You know, you've seen probably you know whatever amount of things you've seen for every one thing you've seen, I've pitched 20 yeah. and mm -hmm. I've probably had 50 conversations for every one before I even got to a pitch. So I think that it's, it's a part of the process and it's, it is, it's cool to hear that though, because it really does, it really does like take one of those situations to, mm -hmm. you know, that learning process to refine the approach. Right. And I think that's something that's, that's probably, especially on the design side, right. There's mm -hmm. probably a lot of people and I'm, I'm totally assuming here, but like, I'm relating this to my relationship with my brother. Mm -hmm. My brother's very, like, very much a, an introvert in a lot of ways, but especially with his work, like he's incredibly talented. And if anybody's seen his stuff, they, they like are blown away by what he does, yeah. but he doesn't like to put himself out there on the internet the way that a lot of people do, because he's like, no, I just, this is, this is, some of this is for me. But, but also, like, I want to make sure that I'm having the conversations about these. I don't want somebody to take this idea. And that's also part of navigating that, right? Like, you know, I think there's always 
there's always arguments for both sides. And like, sometimes you're going to choose one way and it's going to be the other. But the beautiful thing is it's going to either open a door for another opportunity or most creative people. That's just one in a million ideas that you're running with. Right. Like, so I think that's the thing of like not comparing yourself, not getting down on yourself for, for when it does miss because it's going to, right. Like, you know, and I just, just to r- roll that back to sneakers, right? Like that, that Jordan commercial is so powerful, right? Mm-hmm. I don't remember any game winning shots that MJ missed. I remember most of them that he hit, but yeah. I don't remember any that he missed. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that commercial back in the day was one of those things where it was like, man, you got to just keep that in mind. And that's, that's a really beautiful takeaway because, and I, and I appreciate you sharing that story too, because, course, you know, it, it takes a lot to share those stories. I think that that's something that I'm trying to create with this podcast, just a space that we can have these conversations that we get to be a little bit more open about the things that didn't go our way, because ultimately it helps us all kind of find our way to the next project. Right. But exactly. I guess like, you know, kind of the other thing that I'm thinking about in like, you know, the project one kind of leads into this, like the... On the design side um, Mm -hmm. of, you know, the concept of kind of democratizing design, are there any challenges like that, or or I guess not like that, are there any challenges with the kind of concept of, you know, democratizing the design side of (laughs) product, right? Um, And it doesn't necessarily have to be in footwear, right? Because I I know, like, you know, you're going to expand well outside of footwear as you grow. Mm -hmm. But are there any things that, like, you're cautious about? you know, moving forward in that, I mean, that's obviously one of them, but are there any others that you can think of? Yeah. Um, I mean, so as it relates to design, I mean, footwear specifically, like I touched on it is it's, it's usually centered around the IP, right. And brands just wanting to protect that at all costs and, and really anything, right. I mean, not even just like IP as it relates to product, but just anything like brands are trying to protect. So, they usually keep those conversations very, very static in the sense of like, you know, even as you're pitching, right? And, you know, there's not a, a, usually a very open dialogue because they're trying to take in information and relate it to what they can't share. Um, So in footwear that that's, I expect that to be the norm. I expect it to, to loosen up as we really start to really hone in on what you touched on, which is like this, this um, sort of like global, you know, perspective of, you know, these niche pocketed stories in different communities, uh, remote communities, I would say. Um, so I do expect that to sort of open up as, as that becomes more normal. Um, the other side of it is, is the expansion. And, and for me, the blue ocean, which is, right, there's footwear, right? And when you consider an industrial designer or a product designer, like footwear is one of a thousand things that we can design or that individual can design um so for me it's beginning to evolve the closed loop and the open source um and again while footwear is the news like it's going to expand to product in general um but those are the ethos that i want to rely on so in that sense i'm excited because that's where the timing is perfect like brands are recognizing hey we need to open up whatever the process is right whether it's just giving content creators more flexibility with what they're creating and how they're creating. And that's one end of the spectrum. And then there's the whole other end of the spectrum. And we've seen this in some cases, um, but there's legit agencies that do what Common All Creators aims to do, which is to get the brief from the brand, create the product and create the marketing story and the whole go-to-market strategy around them. Um, and it, the, the the name of the agency is slipping my mind right now, but um, they're they have offices in like New York and I believe Amsterdam, but they basically did that for Google. Um, and while Google, everyone expects Google powerhouse, and they're up there as far as like recognition for the Nike. Very few people would have expected Google to outsource product design, but when you think about it, like Google's not a product design company in that sense, or at least like hardware. Um, obviously, the software thing they've got down like to a science um but they outsource this agency to hey using you know this list of data this targeted demographic this targeted areas design a product for this you know these people um and that's really the idea that, that we want to go for with our creators is 
receiving those briefs and whether it is just marketing and just a strategy um, or content around that or it's an actual product, both hard, soft, or digital in that case, um, that's really the idea and the all-encompassing nature of the calling all creators just centered around open source is, you know, the ethos of, hey, every project that we do, you know, you can expect there's going to be a very lean core team. And then based on the product, based on the project, we're going to build a team around that. Um, and then, you know, that that's how we're going to go about it. So it's always lean, but then when the opportunity presents itself, there's a closed loop um, aspect to it as well, where we're bringing in elements of, sustainability, we're bringing in elements of transparency, we're bringing in elements of like for good or social justice, um, just things that are, you know, positive in the sense of like, it's not just yeah. a, a profitable um, or I guess monetary KPI, like there's different KPIs, whether what was your impact, what was, uh, you know, and agencies do this already, but what was your conversions and conversations and engagement and things like this, but like, how does that relate to impact? And I think that's really the, the, the largest question that we want to aim to, to answer is how are we solving these problems impactfully? And whether it's designing a product or designing a narrative, like that's that's the goal. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, uh, I, I didn't really think about this until you started talking about that, but it's kind of interesting because in a sense, you know, like we've democratized a lot of elements of business along the way through, you know, Fiverr and Elance and all these places where like you can, you can find a little bit of help for a little bit of something here and there. Right. Yeah. But footwear is kind of interesting or product design is kind of interesting because it takes so much more, it's so much more in depth, yeah. you know, and, and I would argue that, you know, most products should probably look at footwear as an example of how to create great product because the stories are so deep and so intertwined within the actual product mm -hmm. that you know a lot of a lot of things outside of footwear don't have that much thought process gone into them from like the get-go right it's like exactly. we just need this product to hit the market to hit these numbers and it becomes a part of the spreadsheet but it's interesting because we we don't have ways you know that that really kind of open up the opportunities for you know like let's say an aspiring footwear designer to just mm -hmm you know, get their foot in the door at, on a project level basis, the way we do on like, you know, okay, I can, I can provide this service, you know, as me and as an individual or through, you know, whatever platform that you choose to work through as a, mm -hmm. as a content creator. Right. Um, so I guess in that, you know, kind of vein of thought, like what are, what are the best ways for designers to, to get involved with you specifically moving forward? And um, you know, how, how do you see, how do you see the collective of what you're building with those designers um, supporting each other too? Like, you know, both internally and then, you know, maybe on a project or, or, you know, whatever basis with brands that you might work with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my, my thought is this, um, and there's, to me, there's sort of an evolution to it in, in I guess the discovery of it. So there's, I mean, and for those that, that aren't familiar with the, Literally the best resource you can go to to learn footwear design in this day and age, um, a as a young person is probably pencil. Um, and that's without a doubt what Dwayne is doing it is incredible for the community. Um, you know, it, it's just amazing to see. Um, and, and, you know, very, very grateful to be connected to, to individuals like that. But for me, like that's the introduction, right? And that's, that's the 16 year old kid, 17 year old kid that is kind of interested in sneakers, is interested in, interested in sports, maybe he's designed a couple things or photoshopped a couple like mashups. And it's like, hey, I like this, right? I want to explore it. I want to continue it more. Um, calling all creators fits in post pencil to me um, because pencil, and again, amazing, amazing program. Um, but it's still only solving a small amount of the need in the industry. Um, and that's just the awareness. The awareness is, is that's what opens the door. And that's what um, I'm you know, most grateful about what Dwayne is doing is he's just making people aware that, hey, you can actually be a footwear designer, right? Even if you were considering it, you're going to school for it, like you can even take this program and, and get this accelerated, you know, course 
through design with this this very tenured legend in footwear, but also you're working on actual projects, not conceptual, not thesis, like you're working on actual projects for brands. Um, and I think that's where the biggest value is. The, the, I would say the problem, but the challenge comes from that is what happens to uh, an individual or user post pencil, right? Is where do they go? I mean, pencil is great, but they are beginning to serve more people. Like they're starting to move more into the college realm and, you know, people that aren't actually in college and um, right. things are like the HBCU programs. But then the idea I feel with pencil is to make them aware, get them uh, a loose skill set, get them some sort of, you know, experience with the brand and then it's either shipping them to go work for a brand or shipping them to work or not shipping them, but bringing them in in-house. And they just help to build pencil. And then there's some that, you know, individual just kind of go off and do their own thing and they get like connected with someone that, you know, turned into a freelance opportunity. But that particular uh, class of folks, that third class is where Colin Arcuda steps in, which is you've got a bit of the education, you've got a bit of the experience, you've more so have the the decision right that hey this is what i want to be in so we're going to offer you the community so we offer the community as in forms of inspiration um a lot of what, what um you know people see in, you know, later this year is more of like a membership opportunity to where we're really starting to cultivate uh, that community and with purpose not just like hey you know we're a community and we just kind of throw ideas at the wall it's like Let's just rapidly ideate projects internally so that we're rapidly validating and testing things that we can then take to brands and take to market and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but really just creating that environment for creators to go to with like-minded people. Like, I mean, I know that sounds crazy because that's just social media, right? But like, that doesn't exist within a brand. I mean, unless, you know, some individual within the brand starts it and then it's, you know, this team of 10 people and you know, just very grassroots, but you don't see it on this larger global digital level. Uh, mostly you don't, but it's rare that you see it there with purpose or with mission. Um, it's usually just like, hey, we're a forum or we're like a, a subreddit, right? And we just kind of yeah. go here and we shoot the shit. And, and it's basically Nike Talk, which Nike Talk is great, but Nike Talk set up opportunities for all of us like it yeah. planted seeds of like hey you're into just adidas there's a forum for you you're into only forums in adidas right there's a forum for you so like it started to segment um footwear you know under that realm and that's what we're starting to see now where um you know in these like niche pockets of social media and instagram and, you know tiktok and the clubhouse and all these places but it's really just providing a platform for creators and, and that's really that's really what the need is and, and that's both from feeling but also from creators literally literally telling me and you know just the whole team hey like thanks for sharing you know my, my sketch right this person followed me turned into a conversation now i got a freelance group or thanks for reposting this so and so reached out and now i'm working at under Armour. or you know, thanks for sharing this. It helped me change how I approach how I design. Like all of those things are good user stories for us. So it's really for me. It's it's. I'll say it starts and ends with the creators, but it's about the creators, and obviously it's it's, it's the main right. But like that's why we do it, which is providing community and platform for them to whatever they want to do, whether it's grow your skill set, whether it's connect with uh, people, actually work on projects, or you know, just other things that you'll start to see, which is the membership side of things where it's a very curated experience for the people that have been rocking with us for, you know, years and like they appreciate the platform. Yeah, it's it's beautiful though, because that's, you know, again, going back to that timing thing, this is something that we're all craving, whether mm -hmm. we know it or not, we're craving that community, we're craving that support system that we would normally have. And I don't mean like support system in the sense of like, call your friend when you're struggling. I mean, like yeah. the dude that talks to you when you get a cup of coffee out of the, you know, break room or whatever at your job. Right. Mm -hmm. Those are pieces of, of our life that have been missing so much. And it's, it's cool to hear you say that too, because one of the things that I'm, you know, like I have the sneaker history, Patreon, discord, and we have, you know, 
I don't know, we're, we're probably up to close to a hundred people within that little group, mm. but it's, it's never really, none of what I do is really about the sneakers, right? Like, you know, it's all about the people and that to me, that community that we've been able to create, you know, it, it, on one hand, it, it's finally paying like the, the cost that I have to keep the podcast and recording going and like site up and all those things. Mm. But like, it's the supportive nature for, that I see within there, right? Like the, the guys that are, you know, uh, looking out to find shoes for either, for other dudes that are looking for something or, or, you know, like it's, it's awesome because there's so many off topic things going on where it's like this guy sharing recipes with each other, sharing movie thoughts. Mm -hmm. And like those types of things translate into what you create so much, you know, sure. that I don't think that people fully understand, like, I, you know, like, don't get me wrong. Like when I write, I'm also like closed off from the world. Yeah. I'm the most antisocial person ever, right? Just lock me in. Like yeah. I need to be plugged into the matrix for a while to do this, but it's all those experiences around that shape my thoughts in, in navigating, you know, that essay or whatever I'm writing at the time. Yeah. I think that's such a cool opportunity to, you know, and, and to hear you're kind of just excited for the timing of it. Right. Because it really is something that's like, this has been a snowball that like almost, just like paused and spun in place and got bigger for the last 12 months. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Literally. Pretty like awesome. <laughs> just in this inertia of just like sonic. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's interesting you say that because like, I've always considered calling off creators like competitors, right? Like it's, I mean, not that it's like at that, that stature, but like a behance. Yeah. Where, but it's Behance with more of a community aspect built into it. Well, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, Behance is incredible, but like it's literally just a viewing sort of platform. Yeah. Where, you know, Behance is almost like, I guess, Tumblr in that sense of like, yeah, great, definitely. you know, legendary in the sense of like, you know, everyone uses it, but like it's very one dimensional. And like while you'll find great things there, like there's not really the best opportunity to like, interact and like build community um, yeah and that's really the idea with all more creators is you know it's you know for me i consider myself less of a designer and more like a product strategist and like higher level of just like okay what is my understanding of the world right? what is my understanding of industries and looking at you know the, the greater network that is calling all creators start to say okay like if i put these three people together what do we get? And what does that mean for the world? Like, what is that product, right? And just knowing what they do individually, but more specifically, like what they can do collectively and like what that can mean for the world and like what that can mean for the brand. So like, that's, you know, just the, the opportunity there. And like, you know, and this is getting like super, super like, um, I guess <laughs> uh, in the future, but like just being able to, just to put, more things into the world not more in the sense of like excess but like you know we just have this tagline that we all have the power to create and that's that's really the ethos of like yes you can be a 3m you can be a nike you can be a ikea or a mole or these places but like anyone can make this shit in their living like if they really wanted to you know what i mean like yep. they, all they need are the materials and the tools and like the time and that's that's the equation. Yeah. 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 Most definitely. And, and I, it, it makes me think like at my time of, you know, at like when we, I, so I was at complex when like, I, it just, it actually just popped up on, I don't go on Facebook hardly ever, but it just <laughs> popped up on my Facebook um, a couple days ago or yesterday over the weekend, whenever it was, but uh, it was the first time I posted about, so I had signed up for the complex sneakers handles, right? Like we didn't okay. have that when I started at complex mm -hmm. and we were breaking it out. That was part of what I was working on. And like, you know, I remember signing up for it on my phone, you know, like setting it all up and, and just that, uh, <laughs> that like process of, of doing all those things collaboratively to the team that I was a part of at complex, the teams that I was a part of at at, you know, finish line, even at StockX, right? Like I've, I've been able to witness what you're talking about from a business perspective of like, like I've seen projects that just light people on fire and like the, uh, and people that light each other on fire to make that project 
fire, right? Those two people could be coming from completely different places, but then they get in, in a room, they get on an idea, and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, this is like, how do we just get more of this? This is beautiful. <laughs> exactly. So um, I, I totally understand where you're where you're coming from and, and excited to see that. I'm going to throw a curveball on this on this mm-hmm. kind of last question because um, you kind of already told me, you know, what I mean, calling all creators seems like, you know, the the dream opportunity for you in the footwear space right now. But like what would be like the the highest aspirational dream opportunity for you thinking outside of the footwear space? You know, you mentioned a lot of cool brands right there in that last sentence or two. So <laughs> what would that look like for you? Yeah. Um you know, without, I guess, revealing too much of, of the, the master plan. Um, I mean, the, I guess the obvious things are, you know, obviously growing beyond footwear for sure. Um, and that's just it's by design. It's something that, you know, as I mentioned, like footwear is always the muse and, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we will always continue to do, like just as a personal like passion um, and collective passion, but also just just really applying the skill set and the knowledge and experience that is an industrial designer um, to the world. Um, so, I mean, I guess the ideal position, I mean, if, if it's not working like for myself, but like the ideal position, which in which I'm going after is, um, you know, I consider myself like a director, you know, as I mentioned before, but like moving more into the executive level position, um, calling all creators being more of an entity, um, and me just being sort of the chief like vision officer, you know, something along those lines where it's 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 rooted in that open source, it's rooted in closed loop, um, but it, it's rooted in just creating good product. Um, so I guess that's more like the ideal. Like that's you know plan A. Um, having a plan B is always good. Is you know at least as my mom would say, because um, I'm very much the same. She's just like, wait, so what do you do? And like you know, update her on conversations and shit. And she's like, oh, cool, praying for you. But it's like. Yeah. That's the that's the extent of it. Right? Um, so like it won't be until that first big win comes in where I feel like I'll actually be recognized as like a functioning adult as it relates to like my mom. Um, yeah. But you know, if it is for a brand or if it is like you know outside of calling all creators, it's 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 in that same realm. Um, the, I guess the good thing for me. Uh, in, in the present day is, you know, as I mentioned before, a lot of the social media companies are really starting to focus more on creators, um, you know, and, and actually using that verbiage. So having, you know, the, the established brand and more specifically the established community, um, there's a lot of leverage there as it relates to opportunities like in the greater market. Um, the, I don't say the unfortunate side, but the, because of where the, the industry is now, a lot of that is just rooted specifically in content. Um, so it's most in, uh, companies now are like, hey, you know, Target, right? We'll send you the product, you create it however you want and we'll share it. Like that's sort of like the new influencer yeah. model versus like having a brief is what it used to be. Um, so in that, like it's, it's difficult, but it definitely is in that same realm of working with creators. So if it's not specifically in footwear with calling all creators, it's just being able to continue to leverage the community in some way, um, or the, the, the experience that came from the community or the insight that came from the community in that it's bigger than just creating content. Like that's one of the first things, but also um, beginning to educate creator specifically and it's still being about the creator okay if we're going to pivot this into you know a greater industry sort of thing how are we educating creators and you see like instagrams like creators page i'm starting to do glimpses of, of that of this is how you set up lighting and you know these are certain tips of editing your photos and you know just all the smaller sort of i don't say intangible things but just you know beginner sort of uh, skill sets if you will um, but we're going to see a lot more of that to where sort of this, you know, rising tide raises all boats sort of thing where, you know, the, the cream of the crop, if you will, is the influencer, the typical influencer. But even that has just been skimmed away, in, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, everyone's going to be leveled to this idea of creator. But then there's going to be varying levels of creators. There's going to be creators that hey like I said, we just ship you a product you create your content that's the transaction 
and then there's going to be entities and likely more of the influential people, the blue check folks, where they're more in charge of strategy or building the community around that initiative or that product. Um, so I believe we're going to see more of that, but, but wanting to, for me personally, like, I guess be a thought leader in that. So, well, it's not like really a position. Um, it's just using that insight. It's using that experience to say, Hey, like, let's look at this differently. Right. Because I think even now that the conversation around creator, as I mentioned, is still content and it is still under that guise of influencer. You know, fifty thousand followers, hundred thousand followers, and like you know, not to be like overly political, but like you're just fashion over, you know, former athlete chick that wears bikinis. You know, what I mean? like cool. Like that's one model, right? As far as like influencer, yep. but then there's people that I classify like the the community of calling out creators, which are pro servers. Like they're aficionados of footwear, but they can also say, hey. You know, that new Kyrie, they should have evolved it, right? It's too too redundant from the last couple of models. Or they should have done this because performance-wise, it wasn't, you know, this. So they have valuable insight to offer versus an influencer, which is data-driven, which is great, right? 100,000 followers, they're in LA, they're in New York, they're in Paris. Cool. Like, so you're a fashion influencer through and through. But just because you're posting this thing, does that mean that you're actually selling product? Or are you actually providing thought leadership in that space in some way? Or is it just like some catchy comment in, you know, (laughs) a carousel of posts? So like, yeah, again, a a bit like long-winded. So either chief visionary or like, you know, thought leader in the sense of like still working with creators, um, you know, obviously a couple of preferences as far as like industry, but just just wanting to change the industry really is, is really the mission, um, you know, through and through. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful, man. I think that's, it made me think of, um, you know, kind of, as you were talking about that too, like the, I guess like to, to want to ask like your opinion on like the, you, you know, you're talking about content and, and design and like how, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's like so forced together because of social media. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and it, that kicked into my mind, like, you know, I, I'm a big, like, Kickstarter, Indiegogo person, like when yeah. product is being developed on those platforms, I try to support whenever I have the, the you know, money to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love being I love scrolling through and seeing what people are doing and thinking and like pushing because it's, you know, it's those it's it's kind of what you're talking about, but just in like a general sense, right. Yeah. Um, but what's really fascinating about it is, you know, the whether we realize it or not, the best products on those platforms have incredible content to get us in emotionally involved in that product That's before true. we even see the product in hand. So it's That's almost, it. uh, it's, it's almost like the, the real world example of what you're talking about, right? It's like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I've bought in, in the last couple of years, I've bought in a lot of, um, oh, like little, like, um, you know, replaceable, like silverware, right? That's like credit card size. So it just slides mm-hmm. out, stuff like that. That's like, you know, you can probably find it on Amazon, but like, hey, this person thought this through a little bit more. It's going to cost me a little bit more and I've got to wait six months or nine months to get it. Yeah. But like, I'm supporting an individual here that is really like trying to make a difference. And yeah, so- connect with the story for sure. Like what yeah, the exactly. person, the brand, the, the anti, you know, Bezos, like whatever your thing is, yep. like you connect with that through you know, whatever that perspective is. Yeah, definitely. It's it's such a, you know, it's it's such a it's such an interesting time that we're in, right? Because we have mm-hmm. access to all these things, but inevitably we get kind of just sucked away by whatever comes, you know, and catches our attention and then mm-hmm. we're off down that path, right? And you know, to, to circle back to footwear, like Nike does this all the time. They're doing it with a LeBron watch. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they're doing it with the the vote back thing. It's like, these are all things that we, as sneaker people and sneaker heads, we generally are interested in, but like, we also, it also deters us from potentially seeing a lot of other things that are out there. So exactly. it's, it's, it's really, it's, you know, it's really interesting to see where you're at and like, kind of this, like, 
where I think we're in a turning point for a lot of stuff because people are ready for change coming out of COVID whenever mm -hmm. all this stuff is, you know, I would say, you know, fully or, or almost fully, you know, safe to, to move forward. And we're going to see a lot of different things, but like, that's a, a really good position to be in, in my opinion. So, um, well, man, it's been, it's been so dope to talk to you. I, I know we went over by <laughs> quite a bit, but <laughs> I'm appreciative that you just rock with me for, for the extra half hour here. Um, nice. I guess like, Definitely let people know where they can find you. Um, and, you know, I guess any last things that you want to share too, if, if they need to be aware of in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely appreciate the time. Um, as far as like socials, um, you know, calling all creators, it's just calling all creators on, on Instagram. Um, the website's still under construction, but it's calling all creators dot co. Um, you should expect that relaunch uh, either February or March. And, uh, we're going to be doing some cool things this year. I'm excited about a lot of the conversations that we've been having. Um, 2020 was interesting in the sense that we didn't do a lot like, you know, public facing work. Um, there's a couple little things that we did, um, but uh, a lot of incredible conversations and a lot of like new direction that, that uh, excites me and I'm sure would excite a lot of the, the community and just being able to, you know, have a place that that's their own. Um, so yeah, super excited about that. Uh, more personally, um, you know, I, I still uncomfortable like being like the the front facing man. Um, but you can find me on on Instagram. It's Jeremy M dot Green. Uh, M is my middle initial. Um, and yeah, you know, same thing on on Twitter. Um, not on anything else like Clubhouse or any of these other things. So um, try to limit my social media interactions. So, but yeah, uh, you can find me there. And I mean, yeah, outside of that, it's, it's been super good like just chatting with you you know i know we've, we've talked about like bigger things and, and wanting to sort of find a way to work together with like sneaker history and, and you know even just having more conversations like this because i think this is our part right in, in sort of changing the industry and, and, and wanting to literally be the change that is the industry and, and having these conversations that are less around you know while it's all great the hype and oh this is this shoe's coming out you know this month and this week and that and like the drops are cool, um, but the drops are literally for me the introduction to sneakers um, and like the conversation that we're having now more about the sustainability and the greater industry and um, awareness and transparency and like these are the conversations that um, should be landing on sneakers and confirmed app and things like this and, and we'll start to see it more of a um, firm believer in the divinity of it and, and that it literally starts here. So. Definitely, man. I'm I'm 100% with you. Well, it's it's been a pleasure. Thanks for spending the time with me. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and uh, we will catch you on the next episode. Peace. Peace, y'all.